point of this video today is to show a couple of things on what should we do when the dog goes to lunge in front. So one thing that's important to know is that when the dog's in our lower center, dogs are on our lower center of gravity under our hips. So when a dog pulls us, they tend to do that to us. And then when they do that, we over extend our bodies and then we injure ourselves or, get, or we fall over or the dog pulls us to the thing. So it's good to know how to hold it. So we've got videos out there talking about leash locking. So the leash lock looks like that. To get more info on the leash lock, go check out leash locking video on the YouTube channel. And um, yes. Yes. Perfect example while the video is rolling is that little guy comes on with his scooter. He can get excited. So I just thought I'd reward him away from it just to kind of keep his focus. So that wasn't set up, that just happened. Um, leash locking is number one. The reason why is he goes to pull locked into position and you can't pull the lead out of my hand. Number two is when you're walking, be aware of your knees. Don't lock up. When he, when you see a dog and you lock up and he pulls towards you, you're going to fall over because you're, um, you're too rigid in your body movement. Number three is you've got to know where to put the lead. So I prefer to put the lead on my hip because if my, my hand's on my hip or on my thigh, then my body and my hand and the lead become one unit and it's harder for him to pull me over. Um, and the next step, the next point is your, um, your body weight. So for example, okay, if I walk up here, let's just say I'm coming back and he lunges towards the dog, it would normally kind of look like that real quick. He lunges ahead, my hand goes onto my hip. Because I've got a leash locked, he can't escape, the lead can't slip through my hand. My hand's on my hip, so then my body weight is one. And then me um, moving to the side, like see even now he wants to sniff something leaning backwards I can get him to stop because it's my body weight and then having those knees a little bit bent gives me fluidity in my movement where if you're rigid and you do something like this which is the most um, normal um, way of someone will stop their dog whiplash can happen you fall onto the ground but also you're like you're playing a tug of war where that's why okay when we're walking one of the techniques is to practice is when you're walking hand goes on the hip and you change direction Polishing to reward him for not focusing on me, but that's no problem. And we do that. Now we practice this technique. So then in the event that he runs towards the bird or the dog, yep. I can always stop and I'm already ready to change direction. Yes. Now he's found something on the ground to sniff, so it kind of gives a, um, a good perspective of how to keep him next to us. So one more time, this is just me walking back and forward, but watch my feet. I pivot and I'm already ready to turn. So I'm spinning on my horse on my feet and I'm ready to turn. So then if he goes to lunge at a dog, I've turned and I've already taken control of the situation rather than stopping and locking up and then talking the dog too much. So a couple of tips there for you. If there's any questions, put them in the comments below and good luck.